Ten years ago, crazy farmer Eduardo sold his last cow to fat cat Carlos for some magic beans. But the joke was on him because Eduardo planted those beans. And look what he got! Ha! Today, 20 Brits, including a firefighter, a nanny and a whole family, have taken leave of Great Britain and their senses to tackle the total wipeout course. 19 of them will wither and droop, but one will blossom victoriously and walk away with £10,000. Let the games begin. Welcome to an extraordinary edition of Total Wipeout. We've dispensed with frippery and nonsense this week to tackle a genuine issue which affects the whole nation. Who's better at Total Wipeout? The North, which is here, or the South, which is here. Now, as I was born in Solihull, which is here, I am perfectly placed to act as an impartial judge in what is likely to be a vicious and sustained campaign of hate. Or, to put it another way, I'll be equally loathed by both sides. Right, on with the battle. Let's see what they're up against. The Qualifier, the mother of all challenges. Crash Mountain, the daddy of all challenges. Dizzy Dummies, the godfather of all challenges. And finally, the Wipeout Zone, the great auntie that's also a cage fighter of all challenges. This promises to be the grudgiest of all grudge matches, but I pledge to be unbiased and impartial at all times. Hey, up to North, thump em. Get the Bally Blighters, hooray. Now, Amanda's at the top of the qualifier with today's first contestant. Is it a bird? Is it a plane? No, it's 51-year-old retired Navy engineer, Dave. I'm the Yorkshire Action Man. <clears throat> what was that? Uh, David, you're a Barnsley man. I'm assuming you're going to be up for the Northerners today. I've got a good pair of stout legs. <laughs> Unfortunately, after the first qualifier, there's only going to be two Southerners left. Because uh, six of them, or perhaps eight of them, is it going out? Yeah, well, hopefully his run on the qualifier is better than his maths. It's eight, by the way, Dave. Dave? There you oh, go. Oh, come on, my little Yorkshire pudding. Oh, nice speedy start. Not sure if he meant it to be that speedy, though. But he is straight up onto the pontoons and about to face the first obstacle. It's the return of a favourite of mine, dodgeball. Sprint across the floating pontoons, avoiding an onslaught of tiny red balls of which there appears to be an unlimited supply. What? Anyway, all those years of Navy training coming into effect now and Dave's living up to his title of the Action Man. Well, the Yorkshire Action Man. He could only be from Yorkshire with that look. That's it, David! But how will this tough guy fare against the brutal barrage of fist and foe? affectionately known as the Sucker Punch. But I don't know who's affectionate towards it, but... Oh, dear. Dave's first trip up and it's not actually on the wall yet. OK, he's on. Here he goes. Dave ducked and dived the dodgeballs with ease, so this should be... Oh, that's a shame. Northerners might be hard as nails, but the Sucker Punch is harder. So it's like nails made of diamonds or something. Next for Action Man Dave, it's Buenos Aires' most treasured landmark. No, not, not that one. No. no, not that one. No, 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 no. Hang on, that's a dog. And that's an old woman. Just stop it, will it? Deb. OK, Buenos Aires' most treasured big red ball-shaped landmark. There we go. And like all the great landmarks, it takes your breath away. We're all going on a summer holiday. Dave wasting no time up that ramp. Look at his little Yorkshire legs go straight onto the first ball. Oh! Yes, the very north and then very, very south. The navy. In the navy. No, 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 no. Yeah, voice no, 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 of an angel. Yeah, there's a second career for her right there. Thankfully, his sea legs and sea arms will get him to the final part of the qualifier. It's the sweet letters of shut. Two giant mechanical foam letters swinging side to side. Shh. 
Right then, come on, Dave. Here we go. Oh, oh, <laughs> so close. Yet, yeah, uh, actually, it wasn't really that close, was it? It just fell off straight away. Action Man Dave has done the North proud with a time of two minutes and 15 seconds. By gum. Hurrah! How are you feeling? Oh, lovely. Come on, the Northerners. Doing it for the South is 23-year-old George. He's flown with the RAF. Requesting clearance for takeoff. Yeah, he's definitely a Southerner. George is so dreamy. Did she just say that out loud? Yeah. So, Jet Set George is off. Chocks away, tally-ho and giddy-up. Oh, no, that's not right, is it? No. An evasive manoeuvre around the blocks, but soon realises there's just a lot of water on the other side. That didn't work. Jet Set George attempts a flyby now at the big red balls. Over. No. The rather... Not, not over. Over. Onto the swinging letters of shut. The whole of the south of Britain depending on you here, George. No pressure or anything. He won't mind. Here we go. Oh, the bolt, the bolt. I think he hit turbulence at the far end of the suck and had to bail out. Jet Set George cruises home with a time of 1 minute 56 seconds, edging the Southerners into an early lead. Oh my word, that was a lot harder than anticipated. Blimey. I didn't think people said that anymore. So, a strong start from the Southerners. This North versus South thing is pretty exciting. Was it my idea? No. Good. Well done, me. So, continuing with my brilliant theme, the next contestant in the North versus South Total Wipeout special is from the Midlands. Um, well, I'll just both. Go, Midlands. 33-year-old Brummy Impty is a security guard and a self-titled bad boy. Are you a little bit of a bad boy then? Is that how people know you, Impty? I'm very bad. I'm bad at maths, English, <laughs> geography, history. I mean, you name it, I'm pretty bad at it. We're all aboard the Birmingham. This is how not to do it. Yeah, that's... Hang on. How not to do it. OK. No, oh, yeah, you're right. That's how not to do it. Mm, caught by surprise. But he's up onto the pontoons. I really wouldn't taunt Los Tossers de Bolas, MT. They don't. That's... they're nasty. <laughs> you see? That's what happens. Here we go. Oh, no! He fell in the mud before even facing a fist. I'm not sure if that was cowardice or genius. Bit of a wallow. Technically, empty. that's not an obstacle. You didn't have to tell him. Onto the balls now. And the funny guy is racing up the ramp. Ish. Here we go. Go! No! <laughs> and that, my friends, was funny. I'm a picker, I'm a grinner, I'm a lover, and I'm a sinner. I think he sort of came and bolted then. Right, last chance to redeem yourself, MT. You could be the first person to get across the swinging letters. Oh, no. Maybe not, actually. No, no. Barely able to raise an arm, let alone a smile. Empty finishes in three minutes, 39. So, anything funny to say, Empty? Comment? No, I didn't think so. Next to run are two fiery ladies. To the untrained eye, they appear to be similar contestants. But to a man who's got their jobs written down on a piece of paper in front of him, there's one big difference. 32-year-old Dawn is a firefighter, Whilst 28 year old circus performer Emma is a fire starter. This ain't no match for me because I can breathe fire! But who's hottest on the qualifier? Firefighter Dawn is first to go, opting for the seated slide approach. Very graceful. Okay. Why climb over when you can dismantle the course? Well, because that's cheating, that's why. Oh, well, that'll teach you. Used to sliding down poles and apparently adept at sliding off them too. So will Firestarter Emma have more luck? Oh, she also adopts the seated descent. This is the ancient eight-year-old on a roller coaster technique. It works. Here we 
we go. Oh, right in the face. <laughs> Emma, this is called dodgeball, which means you have to, you know, no, oh, never mind. It's still on, though. Oh, no. No, no, I spoke too soon. It's not that way, Emma. To the left. There we go. No, the other left. Uh, well, let's come back to Emma's aquatic antics. Dawn on the big red balls now. Will her firefighting heroics be of any use here? No, no, none whatsoever. I'm not going to let you live this one down back at the station. You can be sure of that. Oh, mind you, that's a lovely arm print, though. Nice work. Can the fire starter set these big red balls aflame? No, that's just a noise. Here we go. One, two, three. No. Well, that's the furthest anyone has got on the ball so far today. Not that you should be too proud, Emma. Just means that everybody else has been a bit rubbish. So Emma's last chance to earn a scorching time now. Here we go. Oh, oh! <laughs> Tried to hurdle the S, but ended up being well and truly extinguished. Emma finishes in 3 minutes 51. But it's firefighter Dawn that wins this smoking battle, coming in 30 seconds faster, in 3 minutes and 21. You have every right to woo. Five contestants down, 15 to go. And next to represent the South, it's 42-year-old accountant Yinka. Now, Yinka, you look extraordinarily pleased to be here, but aren't you a little bit tentative about taking on this massive qualifier? Yinka? Yinka? Uh, not at all. Uh, like I say, the sun's always shining, so happy days. Bring it on. Does anyone else have a bad feeling about this? He's just set himself up. Oh, dear. Sunday, Monday, happy days. He's the happiest man on the planet. The dodgeballers will soon put paid to that. Oh, no, not actually. This is great. This accountant doesn't do things by heart. And he's made it. How happy? <laughs> Very happy. Maybe the sucker punch will turn that smile upside down. Oh, no! He's Yinka Stinker! If Tickle Pinker Yinka can make it over the balls, well, I think he'll just burst with joy. Yes! Oh! <laughs> Put on a happy, happy, happy face! Well, he may not have stayed on much so far, but Yinka's on for a very good time if he can only beat the shirt. Oh! Dude, that's gotta hurt! That will have done. Still, no one's made it past the S today. Tickle Pinky Yinka completes the qualifier. Speedy. Yeah, I thought that would cheer you up. So, with six runners having tackled the qualifier so far, it's the Southerners who've taken the early lead. With Jet Set George and Tickle Pinker Yinka sharing the top spot with Action Man Dave representing the North in third. Firefighter Dawn is in fourth, whilst Bad Boy Empty and Firestarter Emma are lingering in fifth and sixth. So far, the story of the qualifier has been a tale of peril, of menace, and of being knocked off things and falling into water. But fear not, for the next contestant is hoping to turn this evil tale of woe into a fairy tale. Meet 35-year-old Gretel from Derbyshire. What is it you do for a living? I'm a midday supervisor in local school. What is that? It's a dinner lady. Ah, this is Gretel. This is for all the dinner ladies, midday supervisors and kitchen staff in the Derbyshire area. Woo! Yeah, we need to start putting a time limit on the shout-outs. <laughs> Here we go! So Gretel's quest begins, and the first foe she must face is... Well, getting up onto the pontoon. It'd be nice if they could hold off on the dodgeballs just for a moment. Oh, they won't, but it would be nice. I think Gretel's going to need some help here. Oh dear, not a fairy tale start. But as they say, the road to true wipeout never did run smooth. When I say they, I meant me, just then. Ouch! Ooh, Los Tossas de Bolas on target today. That pink hair's like a red rag to a bull. Steady, steady. Oh, no, she's in again. If getting in the water is easy. See? Problem is, it's, it's the getting out that's proving a bit time-consuming. OK. 
Okay, let's let's rejoin Gretel's fairy tale a little bit later. I'm joined now at the top of the qualifier by Mikey from Liverpool, who says, and I quote, Northerners are the cream of the entire world. Mikey, that's a pretty big boast. Talk to me. Well, it's basically just the absolute truth, isn't it? We are the cream of the genetic pool. We are the most intelligent, we're the most attractive, we're the most fun, the most friendly. Yeah, OK, we get the idea. You like Northerners. Nice poo headband, by the way. Looks good. Modest Mikey now on the big balls. Here we go. Yes, yes, yes. Oh, all the way to the fourth ball. It started off so good, and then it went bad, and ended just plain ugly. Mikey's a doctor by trade. Did he trade as a doctor? I don't know, but he should have a calm and precise approach to the swinging letters. No, he just ran blindly and hoped for the best, didn't he? And then fell in. Another victim of the S, that giant letter H is maybe starting to feel a little bit left out today. Modest Mikey completes the course in an amazing 1 minute 39, which currently makes him the cream of the leaderboard. Back to Gretel ever after, and she eventually completes the course in... Oh, no, hang on. That's not the end of the course, is it? No. Keep going, Gretel. <laughs> oh, she's in the mud. Just like the story of the dinner lady, the mechanical fists, and, and the, the swamp. Do you know what? This fairy tale analogy thing really isn't going well, is it? I'll stop. Oh, look, it's a frog! This really is a fairy tale. Well, this is perfect. Gretel will kiss the frog, it'll turn into Prince Eduardo, and he'll carry her across the rest of the qualifier and into first place. Just need to kiss the frog, Gretel. Quick pick up cheek. <laughs> oh, awkward, she's obviously not his type. Oh, dear. Here we go, the big balls. Oh, that was close! Milliseconds from being motivated. <laughs> This is a first on Total Wipeout. I don't think I've ever seen someone struggle to fall off the big red balls. This is plain weird. Just, that's easy, see? Brettle Ever After eventually finishes the course in 9 minutes and 10 seconds. Not exactly happy Ever After, but she seems happy, so let's not tell her just yet. I've done it! You did! Thank you! Thank you! So far today, that's five contestants from Tur North and three chaps from the South. Mikey. Next to run is someone who claims she's from Louisa land, which is, um, uh, she's made that up, hasn't she? It's all starting to make sense now. Louisa land is really fun and exciting and it's full of glitter and just spread the love and the happiness and just have lots and lots of fun. I'm so excited. <laughs> Good luck out there today. Thank you, thank you. <laughs> right, well, it's time for Louisa to visit Total Wipeout land. Louisa! Oops. Ouch, that's gonna hurt. Oh, what an adventure. Yeah. Ow, in the face! Here we go, yes! No, no, no. Yeah, it'd be fair to say Louisa from Louisa Land has probably not enjoyed her holiday in Total Wipeout Land. People that say, oh, it's easy, come do it. Seriously, not as easy as it looks. Hoping for a slightly less painful qualifier is 19 year old tour guide Joe. What is it you do, Joe? Uh, I'm a jumper outer. <laughs> you what? Uh, a jumper outer. Uh, I work on the ghost tours in Edinburgh. Um, it's my job for waiters for tourists, and I jump out and scare them. <laughs> well, show me, show me what you've got then. Okay, well, if I just, I'll just. Yeah. Okay. Here he goes. Joe, he's gonna jump out. <laughs> <laughs> Is it the jumping out that scares the tourists or all that hair? Whatever, jump her out to Joe on the sucker punch now. Here we go. No surprise! <laughs> Why is Amanda looking so shocked? Oh, I see. Millimetres away from having his voice an octave higher. That punch in the face doesn't seem so bad now. Can he adapt his jumping out to jumping over? Let's find out. Here we go. Yes? No? Oh. Huh? <laughs> what an amazing first jump. The second jump needed to be slightly to the right and slightly, well, better. These swinging letters have caused chaos for the competitors so far. Will Joe have any more luck? Oh! <laughs> OK, 
Okay, he failed, but he failed magnificently. Jumper out to Joe finishes in just over two minutes, and even the qualifier can't straighten those curls. Ah! <laughs> So far, the contestant's success rate on the dodgeball has been as hit and miss as, well, a game of dodgeball. In fact, you could say it's been mission impossible. Anyway, here's a list of easy-to-follow rules that'll help even the most timid of competitors become artful dodgers of balls. I mean, how hard can it be, really? I mean, it's just a... Ow. So, here are the do's and don't do's of dodgeball. Do dodge. Don't not dodge. Do duck. Don't duck this far. Do dive. Don't annoy lost tossers. Can 33-year-old Kim from Scotland make it across unscathed? What's she doing? I'm Scottish Kim! I'm a wee bit dumb! Right, Dim Kim's off. And there's a chest hit. She should have dodged there. Oh, demonstrates the dive. Good work. Well, a trip. Already, but she hasn't fallen in the water, so that's... Oh, no, no, she's fallen in the water. Yeah. So that's not dodgeball. No. Can accountant Christy from Chesterfield improve on Kim's performance? This is good dodgeballing. So far, no major hits. Oh, no, spoke a bit too soon. <laughs> yeah, that was a knee and back of the head combo. Knocks Christy off her perch. The marksman show no mercy to a damsel in distress or a damsel in de-water. That's not dodgeball. Let's try this one more time. Has cocktail waitress Libby learnt from their mistakes? Oh, that's a new one. She casually bats the ball away with her hand. Impressive start from Libby. Being a waitress, she'll have good balance. And she's made it. Now that's dodgeball. Ow! So let's see how that affects the leaderboard. Modest Mikey modestly storms into the top spot. Jumper out to Joe jumps into fourth, whilst Christy from Accounts lands in sixth. Louisa from Louisa lands sixth in seventh. Dim Kim is in ninth with Leggy Libby joint tenth. But poor old Gretel Ever After won't get a happy ending as she slips to 13th. Total Wipeout has long been considered good, clean fun for all the family. So, with that in mind, I'm proud to introduce you to Total Wipeout's first ever family. The Morrises is he. The Morrison. The Morris S. The Morris I. The Morris family from down south in Essex. I've ruined that. This is Alison Morris, this is Cliff Morris, and this <laughs> is Morris Minor. Hi, guys. All right. All right, yeah, how are you doing? Yeah, good. So, uh, which one of you's the daddy? Oh, I'm me. the daddy. He thinks he's the daddy, I'm the daddy. Now, Jack, your mum clearly yeah. thinks that she can beat your dad. How do you feel about that? First, second, yeah. third. So that's how you're going to rank it? Yeah. As long as I beat him, that's the main thing. First to go is son Jack. Mum and Dad, what's my rear? Oh, Mummy and Daddy be so proud. Here we go. Oh, he's caught one of the balls. I bet you're pleased Mum and Dad paid for those after-school dodgeball lessons now, Jack. That's a super confident, even cocky start. Oh, no. No, he's, he's in. And he may just live to regret enraging lost tossers. Yeah, yeah, definitely regretting it now. Ouch. Daddy Morris next. Alison, Jack, who's the daddy? I'm the daddy, then let's have it. Yeah, says so on your passport. And so the dodgeballers let Daddy Morris have it. Oh, I'd watch out, fellas. He knows your dad's. Oi! Oi. That won't help. Oh, oh, yes, the old jump, hug and roll technique. It's quite simple. You jump, and you hug. Nice work. And then you roll. If he wins, he'll be Cliff Richer. I didn't get it. His name's Morris. Last but not least, it's Mummy Morris Allison. Cliff, you think you're the daddy? You're nothing because I'm the mummy. Oh, sweet. I'm really feeling the family love today. It's nice. Warm. 
Mum seems completely oblivious to the melee of dodgeballs flying in her direction. The Morris men couldn't make it through dodgeball without getting a dunking, but remember, Mummy knows best. Oh, well, most things, just not dodgeball. Back with son Jack now on the big red balls. He's Jack of all trades. <laughs> and off. And master of none of the big red balls. Will Daddy Morris's years of experience give him the upper hand on the balls? I've got a system for this. A system? Oh, good, I like a good system. Yeah. Here we go. What is it? Oh, yes, that's my favourite system. Flailing and falling. Or you won't be going. I'm joining in. Mummy Morris is the last to give it a go. Oh, oh dear. Oh, dear. Mother's pride taking a bit of a knock. Can Jack finish in style? Oh, ooh, ooh. Hang on. Could he be the first to defeat the swinging letters? No, no. <laughs> he hijacked, was a jackknifed. No, I'll, I'll get it in a second. Jack. Jack, there must be a... Yeah, you just jack that in. Don't oh, curse you, Byram! I wonder if Mum or Dad can do any better. No. That, that'll be a no, then. Mummy Morris finishes in 7 minutes 19, <laughs> Daddy Morris in just over 4 minutes. Oh, that was easy. And Morris Minor Jack finishes oh. in a speedy 2 minutes 50. The contact lens are coming, I can't see. Yeah, the steps are to your right there. No, they're to your right. Oh, I meant my right. The fastest was... Jack. And the slowest was... It was your mum. Oh! A sensitive family moment on Total Wipeout. Next to tackle the qualifier is the Don. People call him the Don because his name is Don. Hi. Uh, magic mantra is wibbly wobbly. Oh yeah, and he's a magician. That's what he's doing now. For my next trick, I'm gonna make this course disappear. Great. Don, Don, it's still there. Do your magic words, mate. Try it. Wibbly wobbly. Mm, this is um, embarrassing. That doesn't work. So, can Don work his magic on the qualifier? You see, he made that block disappear. Oh, yes. Be amazed. It's a kind of magic. Don's looking exhausted. Has he got anything left up his wizard sleeve? <laughs> I had to describe that fall. It was a little bit of wibble, quite a lot of wobble. And then a lot of splash. Don the Don finishes in 5 minutes 35. Hello. Hello. How are you feeling? Wibbly wobbly. Next to try her luck on the qualifier is Nanny Tamara. She's from Northampton, which despite the north in the name is in the south. Don't know what she's doing now, there's no... Oh, there you go. Get dodging, Tamara. Yes. Oh, they got her there, but even with a direct hit, Tamara manages to keep her balance. We've got a real nanny fit in our midst. Stop bullying me! Unless you know what stop bullying me is in Spanish, your pleas are a bit wasted. Now, the big red balls. Nobody's crossed them so far today. Will nanny fit be the first? Oh, well, it's a good start. On to the second, now the third ball. This is looking very promising. I'm actually getting quite excited about this thing now. Oh, we're going to the fourth because you do the last jump. One more leap. Come on, Tamara. Yes. Nanny McFit Tamara has made it across the big red balls. This is super califrag... Super califrag... This is great. Gracefully stumbling from ball to ball like a drunken ballerina. A moment to be truly proud of. Maybe not proud. Please, by You know, chuffed. Yes. Now, can she be the first to get across the swinging letters too? Oh, no. But that amazing ball crossing has given Nanny McFit a time which puts her second on the leaderboard. Yep, we've killed the nanny. Okay. I conquered. 
The big red balls, this is amazing. Oh, it's so glorious. Now, they do say that good things come in small packages. Apart from fridges, they come in really big packages. So do ghetto blasters, massive diamonds, full-size robots. So apart from fridges, ghetto blasters, massive diamonds and full-size robots, good things come in small packages, like the next two competitors. Andy from Lancashire is only five foot two inches tall, shorter than me. And Katie from Surrey measures just four foot ten, also shorter than me. But who will walk tall from the qualifier, the nifty northerner or the slight southerner? Southerners haven't got a chance. <laughs> Not a chance of lifting that trophy. Dynamite comes in small sticks. This stick of dynamite's gonna blow this course out the water. He seems angry. Well, what he lacks in size, he certainly makes up for in northernness. He's off. That's one small step for man, but a giant leap for a tiny man. Yes, I can say these things because he is shorter than me. Yeah, that's just a fact. I'm not gloating. The pitter-patter of tiny feet now across the dodgeball. And he's a particularly small target. But he's made it unbelievable. Tiny Lady Katie's next. This is a big... Bad, evil, nasty course. Are you sure you're fit enough for it? Yeah, cool. So I wouldn't have applied otherwise. Katie is seriously small. All oh, right. Uh, very funny, Amanda. Yes. <laughs> she could run underneath the sucker punch and still make it. Oh, well, bang goes that theory, Amanda. Careful in that mud, Katie. We don't want to lose you in there. It's over eight inches deep. Never get out. Now, Andy is actually a circus trainer by trade, so balancing on big red balls should be right up his street. Oh! Apparently not. Maybe he's training to be a clown. I don't know. Will Katie have more luck? Those big red balls have never looked bigger. Here comes the motivators ready. Oh, quick! One, two. Oh! <laughs> the gaps in between are bigger for her. Every now and then I get a little bit lonely and you're never coming around. Turn around. Come on, Katie. Get the ball. Come on, come on. Yeah. The last battle of today's qualifier. Forget David versus Goliath. This is Tiny Lady Katie versus the giant swinging letters of Shah. They look massive now. Oh, my Lord. No! Oh, predictable, really, to be honest. <laughs> so the big battle of the little people comes to an end with Katie finishing in a not-so-tiny time of 3 minutes 25 and Andy achieving a petite time of just over 2 minutes. Ah! That's... <laughs> That's just awesome. Would it be fair to say you're a little bit excited? Yeah, just a bit. <laughs> a final look at the leaderboard reveals that Modest Mikey has done the North proud at the top, followed closely by the Sads and Annie McFit in joint second. Handy-sized Andy falls into sixth. Morris Minor is the only Morris to qualify in seventh, and it's Tiny Lady Katie who steals that last crash mountain place. So the qualifier has come to an end, and with a northerner currently leading the field, I'm firmly wearing my northern hat. Bye. We've had some laughs, we've had some tears. Not talking about the competitors, it's just that I got a splinter from his podium and then the crew laughed at me for crying. But the competitors probably are going through a lot of emotions as well, especially the losers. Crying for them. It's just a splint. It really won't budge. It's right under the nail, and yep, yeah, that's got it. Next, it's Crash Mountain. This motorized monster was originally used as a gigantic clock by the ancient Aztecs. But with one hand moving backwards, it was deemed useless and abandoned. It's a rubbish clock. It doesn't even work. Today, it only ever tells one time. Pain o'clock. The first five to the middle progressed to dizzy dummies. 
Time for a reminder of the Crash Mountain contenders. On podiums one and two are Action Man Dave and fastest in the qualifier, Modest Mikey. I got some bad medicine for Crash Mountain. On three and four, Tiny Lady Katie. There's five spaces on that Crash Mountain. There's five southerners here. I think we're sorted. And Christy from Accounts. On podiums five and six, Tickled Pinker Yinka and Morris Minor. Where's me mum? Where's me dad? Oh yeah, they got knocked out, didn't they? Yeah, you should respect your elders. On seven and eight, Jumper Out of Joe and Firefighter Dawn. This firefighter's on fire. And about to be doused, I suspect. On podium nine is Nanny McFit. God save the Queen! Woo! Was she there? And on ten, it's Jet Set George. On eleven and twelve, a Louisa from Louisa Land <laughs> and Handy Sized Andy. Dynamite normally only blows once, but has more power in me yet. That's how he blows and doesn't suck. Murphy's Law states that whatever can go wrong, will go wrong. And here on Crash Mountain, an awful lot's about to go wrong for seven contestants. He's a clever guy, that Murphy. I'm a big fan. Are you all ready? Yeah. <laughs> so is Murphy. Three, two, one. The klaxon goes and Eduardo starts pedaling. Who will be the first to jump? Oh, Jet Set George rockets on. And off. Christy jumps. Jumper out to Joe, does what he does best. And who's that? That's Nanny McFit. So who's going to be first to the middle? Dave now leaps into the water. Amanda's loving this. Yinka's on. Good duck. That's a promising start. Oh, and a painful end. Yink out! That was one heck of a face plant. So, Crash Mountain is still empty. Christy again. Nope. Now, name it fit. Tries again. No. Tiny Lady Katie. No, oh, barely touched the thing. Jumper out to Joe. Again, just jumping out. It's carnage. Will anyone make it to the middle? Crash Mountain is yet to be defeated. Still five places available in the next round. Who's got what it takes? Everyone taking their time. Come on. Handy size Andy lands it. Will he be the first? Good ducking. He's up. He legs it. He's beaten it. And about time two. Fantastic. Yinka's on. Using the same technique as Andy, under the bar. Come on, Anthony! Up and bombs across. And that makes two Crash Mountaineers, both in yellow T-shirts for some spooky reason. Is that coincidence? Yeah. Three places left to fill, but who will take them? Will it be Dave, Mikey, Katie, Christy, Jack, Joe, Dawn, Tamara, George or Louisa from Louisa Land? Katie goes for it. Ooh, takes a bash on the bonds. Can she make it? Ooh, ooh, ooh. Oh, that was never going to end well. Uh, it didn't. Morris Minor Jack. Oh, that was incredible. Jack's through. All in the timing. Tamara's on. Ducks bides her time. Chooses her moment, off she goes. Oh, and off she goes. Oh, another jump out from Joe. Lands it. His horrific shorts taking a beating. Oh, sets off and falls off. Too slow. Jumper out of Joe fails to jump onto the mountain. Still two contestants short for the next round. They're falling left, right and centre. Well, left, left and right. Very few are falling near the centre. Modest Mikey lays low. Come on, come on. Ooh, can he do it? It's getting closer and he's on. Only one place left now. Katie's having a go. But can she get up quick enough? Makes the dash. And it's over. The Dizzy Dummies have been selected. That's the five. From the north, handy-sized Andy and modest Mikey. And from the south, 
Tickled Pinky Yinka, Morris Minor Jack and Tiny Lady Katie. Yes! I knew the Southerners would do it. Three, two. Well, it's been a long journey. In fact, I need to sit down. Oh, I, I am sat down. That's a shame. I really fancy to sit down. Maybe if I stand up and then sit down. Oh, that's better. So, there you have the winners. Bandits, bye-bye losers. I'm sad as a parrot. I'm sure I'll be all right after I've had a nice Yorkshire cup of tea. It's so much harder than it looks. I, mean, I had plans for that, £10,000. Do you know what? I had a go at Crash Mountain, but flumped, crash landed, didn't I? Crash Mountain frightened me quite a lot, I think, because uh, I could see the end in sight. But it wasn't to be. I think Crash Mountain's a lot harder than being a nanny to a hundred children. That was the hardest thing I've ever done. <laughs> I did all right, but I should have done better. I'm gutted. I don't know what happened. Louise Lund's a little bit sad. Those Southerners, Inca, Jack and Katie, Dizzy Dumb is going to destroy them and they're flopping the water. Northerners are there to the end. As always, Dizzy Dummies begins with the competitors taking a breakfast resurrecting spin on this rotating nightmare. After which they must stumble past a hose wielding Argentinian, dash up the revolving hill and haul themselves over the goalposts. Then it's a slippery clamber across the giant evil pillow that is the blob. Last one across is eliminated and the surviving four do the whole thing again. But this time they must tackle the greasy donuts with the helping of dodgeballs. Last one across that time round is also eliminated, and that will leave three finalists. Ooh, there's a storm brewing, and that's just in the contestants' tummies. It's Dizzy Dummies. Are you all ready? Yeah! yeah! What are we waiting for? Three, two, one! While they get dizzy-fied, time for a quick recap of the five Dizzy Dummies. He's even happier than Larry, possibly the smiliest ever Total Wipeout competitor. It's Tickled Pinker Yinka. Happy days, bring it on. Next, it's the unquietly confident Liverpudlian who thrashed the qualifier. The most intelligent with the most attractive. Modest Mikey. He's the only surviving member of the Morris family left in the competition, that is. It's Morris Minor Jack. She's tiny, she's a lady, she's called Katie. I forget what we call her now. And finally, the little northerner who was first up Crash Mountain, handy sized Dan. This stick of dynamite's gonna blow this toy out the water! So it could be win. Seatbelt off. Unleash the beasts. Don't look at Jack. <laughs> The modest Mike is at the goalpost already and he's up and over. Oh, it never gets any less funny. Mikey slides up onto the blob and slides right off it, which means Katie inherits the lead and skids right off the side. That blob is looking extra greasy today. Morris Minor Jack dives, he's in. Now Andy, he's in. Now Yinka. He's in. Sorry, I just got into a rhythm there. He's not actually in yet. No, he's in. Modest Mike is taking it nice and easy this time round, but Jack is not. Oh, look at that! They're both in. I suspect Mikey won't be too happy with Jack now. Oh, that was brilliant. Ineffectual, but, but brilliant. Andy slips off and kind of causes Katie to do the same. Yinka looking good here. No. Until now. <laughs> Yinka actually got a hand on the final podium, but the rest of him was in the water. I said, take your time. Ignore her, get a move on. Oh, yeah, 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 yeah. Come yeah, on, yeah, Mikey yeah. hanging on. No! Until Andy kicked him in the posture. Yinka gets the crowd going. Yeah. Oh, sadly he couldn't get himself going. Will Mikey have another attempt sabotaged by his rivals? Oh, not this time! He's done it! And Jack's made it too! Here comes Katie. Oh, where'd she go? She was there a minute ago. Oh, I see. Swallowed by the gap. Yinka's making a charge now. 
and he's across too. Time for a celebratory jig, I think. <laughs> Unique style. That way, where are you going? Katie's not done yet. He's given up already. You don't get off that easy, Em. There's one place left in the next round of Dizzy Dummies, and he needs to challenge Tiny Lady Katie for it. It's nice, ladies first. And he must make this now. He needs to stand a chance, and he does. Handy sized Andy survives, which means that Tiny Lady Katie is sadly eliminated from the competition. Oh, Katie, my little, little lady. You're still smiling. Oh, yeah, I've got to. <laughs> cool. What else can you do? It's hard. I mean, I tried my best, and that's all you can do. Well done for getting this oh, far. Thank you very much. I'm proud of myself anyway. Here we go then. First three across, this time go into the wipeout zone. We will have our finalists. And Jack is the first one out, but he's sort of heading sideways. Again. <laughs> still heading sideways, still going. Oh, he's still going. What? <laughs> oh, now he's back. Oh, no, he's gone down. <laughs> Oh dear, Mike is up and over now. Off goes Yinka. Speed of a cheetah. Now, Mikey takes to the donuts. The dodgeballs start flying. Some thrown, some kicked. Yes. And here comes Jack. Jack seems hell bent on spoiling Mikey's chances today. He tried to pull him in, it didn't work. Which means Mikey has a clear run to the finish line. And Modest Mikey is into the wipeout zone. Just behind him, handy sized Andy is onto the third donut. And he leaps and he joins Mikey in the wipeout zone too. It's gonna be happy days. Now Yinka makes his bid to join them. And the three finalists in today's competition have been decided. Not on dancing ability. No. No. Stop that. Which means Jack is gonna need a cuddle from his mum and dad. I have several things to say to you. Number one, where on earth were you going at the top of that? <laughs> Didn't even go out last night. I'm still legless. Let the family down, Jack. Yeah, how am I going to live it down? <laughs> Girlfriend said, don't win it, you're not coming back to me. So I ain't got anything to go back for now. We'll stay in Argentina with us then, yeah? I will do. You're still single then. Alrighty then. On that note, I'm going to get you to go over to the loser's den. So both North and South will be represented in the wipeout zone. For the South, there's Bristolian Yinka. And for the North, there's Liverpudlian Mikey and Andy, who's a Lancashire... a, a Lancashire... a, a, a lancashire I... What's someone from Lancashire called? Ken? No, I mean, like, all the people from... Like, I, Lancastrian, that's it! Lancastrian. Just to get through to the final is just... Oh, man! It's been crazy. It's, it's been a blur. I'm an accountant. How boring is that? But now I'm the man. I think Mike is definitely the person to watch out for. He's got the edge. Um, my tactic so far has just been speed, speed, speed. Some say, you know, he's talented. I would personally say lucky. I would be so proud to be the smallest total wipeout champion. He is the energizer, buddy. I'm fast, I'm furious. He could be the dark horse that, you know, gets second place. I'm being quite a muscular sort of guy. Uh, would it help me or not? Um, I just think to myself, you know, yeah, it will. <laughs> Southerners are rubbish anyway. I'm amazed that he's even got into the final. I'm extremely determined to make sure it is not a happy days for Yinka. It's no fun competing against somebody when you can easily beat them. This is the thing that forever will show that the North is superior to the South. They'll know what a Southerner is because I'm just going to whip their butt. I'll be gutted if Yinka holds that trophy up and he gets a better time than both of us. It's going to be a great, great final. Happy days. The Wipeout Zone begins, as always, with a journey down Killer Surf. Seriously sliding. Then it's a race up the rapid climb. If they don't reach the top in 10 seconds, a tidal wave is unleashed. 
seriously scary. After that, it's the seesaw of truth, seriously slippy, and the crazy sweeper, seriously sweepy. Finally, it's the rope swing, seriously swingy, and the turntable, seriously serious. Because when they hit that button, the clock stops, and the fastest person wins the total wipeout trophy and £10,000. North versus South here tonight, and it looks like those Northern Hordes have brought the weather with them. It's wet, it's wild, and it's really not very nice at all. Just like the wipeout zone, and Andy is the first to brave it. Handy-sized Andy is representing all Lancashire-ishmen. Come on! Let's do this! And I will let you do it. We'll watch. And he's out! Well, Andy's had a rocky start getting flipped out of the rubber ring, but now he must take on the rapid climb. Ooh, he pulls himself up onto the slope and the 10-second countdown begins. Even with those handy-sized legs, Andy is charging up. He's going to beat it. Yep, he's safe. Now for the seesaw of truth. But a cavalier approach this, but it's working very quick. What will Andy's strategy be on the crazy sweeper? Oh, well, that's unexpected. Hang on a second. I have no idea what just happened. No, I mean, neither. It looks like he just fell off. Either way, Andy must now climb up the ladder to the rope swing. That incident on the crazy sweeper will have cost him vital seconds, so he needs to be quick now. I hope handy-sized Andy's got a pair of gripping hands. He's coming in from a sideways angle, but it's worked. He's on the turntable now. Oh, and he can't stand up. Struggling to get his bearings. Well, he's certainly getting his money's worth on this roundabout. Come on, does he realise he's supposed to jump off? Come on. Come on, there's the button. Oh, this is actually causing me physical pain. No, not that way. Oh. Oh. <laughs> Amanda, the man's just damaged his chances of winning ten grand. This is no laughing matter. So not a lot of energy left now, but he needs a final push to get to the button. Come on, Andy, dig deep. This is the first time of the day. You can still win. Hope he makes it this time. Quick run up. Yes. Andy finishes. What an ordeal. It was a dream start from handy-sized Andy and it quickly turned into a nightmare with two bizarre but, to be honest, quite amusing slip-ups on the crazy sweeper and the turntable. It's not all bad, OK? You did that in three minutes and 42 seconds. Wow. But it felt like a lifetime. It certainly did. <laughs> Yink is up next. Ooh. No longer tickled Pinker. He's just looking very serious. Happy day. The clock starts. A very dizzy Andy may have given Yinka an advantage, but he can't afford to put a foot wrong on this treacherous course. Happy days! Where's he gone? Oh, there he is! And the countdown begins. He's shooting up the rapid climb. That tidal wave doesn't stand a chance. He's beaten it onto the seesaw now. Not quite as fast as he was on the rapid climb. Yeah, that's definitely slower. But safe. Ducks onto the podium. He's up and running. He's down again, taking it carefully. Safe, but he's against the clock. Oh, how's he doing that? Using his upper body strength. Last two to go. Oh! He's safely across. After that workout, I'll be surprised if he can hold on to the rope. But he must. Here he goes. That is impressive. He barely seems to have broken a sweat. Just one more jump to go. Oh, no, this feels familiar. What is it today? Something in the air tonight. Oh, as long as they're happy. Right, choosing his moment. Come on. And he's done it. And he can set the new time to beat. Advantage to the south. And there's that famous dance again. My catch on. Probably not. A 
from a rapid start, Yinka found himself slowed down by the seesaw, but then showed off immense strength and skill on the crazy sweeper. He should be tickled pink by that performance. Look at that smile on your face! Hey, you got to be happy, yeah, you got to be happy. It's been a happy day for you all day today, and it's about to get even happier because you were faster than Andy! Oh, yeah. I'm sorry, man! Well done, mate. It's all right, well, mate. Well all right, done. it's all right, mate. Oh, Yinka, you know what this means! Yeah, it means I got a H, I got a D, and I got the happy! <laughs> but will I get the days? Well, we'll have to wait and see. Mikey's up next. Let's watch. Modest Mikey is now the North's only hope. Can he sink a Yinka? This is how the Daruks do, baby! Yeah! Oh, what was that about? I didn't understand that. I'll forgive him. He's under stress. And underwater. He's out of the rubber ring and off on his quest to take the total wipeout oh, trophy Mikey. back with him to the North. A swim to the rapid climb. He's up and on. The 10 second countdown has begun. But Modest Mikey is making this look easy. Powering up that ramp. Under the seesaw of truth. Ooh, interesting approach. I'm sure Yinka will be very happy if Mike is this cautious the whole way round, taking time. Yinka was slow and steady on the crazy sweeper, so to beat his time, Mikey will need to be a bit more adventurous. And that's exactly what he is being. That edges him into the lead, but one mistake now, and Yinka has won this. Swings out. He lands. Can he make the final jump? Yes! In a time of 1 minute 23, he has won it for the North. It was Northern Grit that won out in the wipeout zone. Mikey's almost perfect dash across the course has earned him the title of total wipeout champion in this battle of North versus South. Time for Amanda to give him the good news. Mikey! Wow, how are you doing? I'm doing pretty good, thank you very much, Amanda. So what you need to know, though, is that Yinka was equally fantastic here tonight, Mike. But you boys know that it's been the battle between the North and the South here today, and it's come right down to the wire. Mikey, you're the pride of the North tonight because you're the total white band champion! Come on! Yinka. Well done! Yeah! Oh, thank you. Thank you. Cheers, man. Thank you. North of the winners! Yeah! So, 27-year-old paediatrician Mike Darrick from Liverpool is today's total wipeout champion, pocketing a tidy £10,000. He'll be returning for the series finale. His victory scientifically proves that the North is better than the South. And if anyone in the South would like to complain about that result, please address all hate mail to either wrong address, BBC Television Centre, Honolulu, Antarctica, NW1 million BFG. After dividing the nation tonight, next time Total Wipeout goes global as the UK's finest take on the world's best. Expect some of this from Great Britain. And some of this from the rest of the world. So until next time, from Amanda and me, it's goodbye. If you want to take part in the next series of Total Wipeout, you could be seeing new things, making new friends, buying new clothes. Please go to bbc.co.uk forward slash be on a show and fill out an application form. Your country needs you to laugh at. BBC One and BBC One HD with famous faces showing off their fancy footwork next tonight. Steve and Alex take charge of Let's Dance for Comic Relief.